is GMO Madness. My grandparents and great-grandparents farmed here on Vancouver Island, and Grandma Rupert said, always leave the soil better than when you found it. I'm here today because I met Dr. Vandana Shiva, winner of the Alternative Nobel Peace Prize, uh, Prize and heard her talk here at University of Victoria. I was so upset that evening, I couldn't sleep. I was inspired and inflamed. I was so perturbed and disturbed about the current state of affairs, I wanted to get out and shout and tell everybody about this. We have a right to know what's in our food. The ever-growing evidence is that GMOs are poisoning us and destroying our planet. Now I'm wondering with this crowd, do I need to tell you what GMOs are? No! Okay. No! <laughs> okay. GMOs stand for genetically modified organisms. These are plants and animals not found in nature, created in laboratories. Once they are released into nature, you cannot recall them. Like opening the lid of Pandora's box. Shame, shame, My father. Shame. My father Aaron said in the 1990s, there is no wall high enough to keep out GMOs. There are two types of GMOs. One type has an insecticide toxin spliced into the gene, and the other one uh, has a pesticide resistance gene. Those are the two main types, and some of them have both. So when you plant it in a field and saturate that field with pesticides and herbicides, everything in that field dies, in theory. Everything except for the genetically modified plant. Animal studies show that GMOs cause cancers, ulcers, acute signs of early aging, reproductive and growth problems. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Population control! <laughs> GMO toxins are in our bodies. They even cross the placenta. In a 2011 study in the Scientific Journal of Reproductive Toxicology, 93% of fetal blood tested contained GMO toxins. This is dangerous, and as a mother, I found it downright terrifying. What is worse is that more than 80% of all food sold in Canadian supermarkets contains these GMOs. 80%! And nobody knows about it, because they are not labeled. 64 countries require GMO labeling or outright ban GMOs. 64 countries, such as progressive nations like China and Russia, require GMOs to be labeled. Why not us? to label GMOs in America, North America. We are Canadians living here in Victoria and Vancouver, but so far the right, the fight to label has been in the United States. This is a problem affecting everybody, everywhere. You coming out today is a sign that Canada is waking up too. Yeah. I want to tell you about a grandmother. Her name is Pam Larry in California. Last year, Pam presented a proposition to label GMOs called Prop 37. My family heard about this and contributed $660,000 to help her spread the word. Other families uh, and other companies and individuals joined us and we raised three to four million dollars to help Pam with her campaign. Californians wanted GMO labeling and the proposition was going to pass with a landslide. But guess what happened in that last six weeks of the campaign? Corporations! Oh, no. Monsanto, Dow, Syngenta, Coca-Cola, Post, DuPont, Bayer, PepsiCo, Cascadian Farms, Kellogg's, Cashy, and others. Yes, Cashy, yes, Cashy, they are getting, but they... Wake up, people, wake up! Well, they outspent, they outspent the grassroots initiative by 10 to 1. And they waged a dirty, fearful, and deceitful campaign. They always do! Well, they didn't 
split the vote by tenfold. The final vote came down to 48.5% for labeling and 51.5% against. Oh. It wasn't a win for consumer rights this time, but it was a victory in that six million Californians voted for labeling. That represents a tenfold increase in awareness of this dangerous and unsustainable technology. We are awakening and we are the droplets in the water, in the tides that are turning. Just this past week in Connecticut, the House approved a pro-labeling bill that went to the Senate. And the Senate voted to approve it 35 to 1. Democrats and Republicans together. Concerned citizens in Washington State and Vermont right now have bills on the table as we speak. Let me tell you something neat. Scientists have come up with a way of measuring life in fields. They take this kind of box contraption, which has cameras and sensors in it, and they lay it in the field. It counts every time a bug or creature crawls or slithers or buzzes through it. In an organic field, there will be hundreds of these bugs and insects going through that field in 24 hours. Yay bugs! Yay bugs! Yay bugs! same box and put it in a GMO field. Guess what happens? No, no bugs. No bugs. Dead. No no bugs. Dead. Possibly Dead. one or two. So the animals and insects have learned to stay away from GMOs or have been killed. But we have not. I thought the Canadian government was supposed to protect us. Don't we have the right to know what we are eating? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Unless we want to teach ourselves where to shop, how to shop, and what to buy, I think so. Yeah. Tell your schools and your workplaces about GMOs. Make your voice heard. Ask your local elected representatives to represent you. In a world where voting with your money can be an act of protest, buy from your local farms food you trust. If you want to be truly defiant, plant seeds and grow your own food. It's confusing out there in the supermarket. We are being misled and confused and deliberately so. What should you eat? What should you trust? What should you avoid? Here are some shopping rules. First of all, avoid natural, if that's the only claim. By itself, natural means nothing nowadays. Natural means it could have pesticides and herbicides and GMOs, and it probably does. Always. Now, foods bearing the Canada Organic Seal can be trusted. Organic is a legal definition and a traceable system with the force of law behind it. There is a new label out there called Non-GMO Project Verified. It is third-party certified at a threshold of nine-tenths of a percent of contamination. If you see it on packaging, that means that the food has been tested and there are no GMOs. It is a step in the right direction, however it's not all that great. Harmful and sustainable pesticides and herbicides are still allowed as are chemical fertilizers. Not, just not the ones in GMO production. This label is being used a bit as greenwashing by some companies. It's certainly not as good as organic. Organic certification has never allowed GMOs ever. So when in doubt, if in doubt, by certified organic, organic automatically means it's GMO free, plus it's grown sustainably. Organic is the gold standard. There's no harmful pesticides, no harmful herbicides. Buying organic is safe for you and the only way we can keep our waters and lands and soil pure. that GMO field, barren, barren of bees, barren of insects, 
It's silent, except for farmers in biohazard suits, spraying toxic chemicals on the crops. Now, see an organic one. See a world where the bees are buzzing. Where the soil is naturally replenished. See the world where food is democratic. Where the seed is freed and grows again and again and again and again. When you buy When you buy organic, you are supporting this. Demand GMOs to be labeled. If Russia and China and 62 other countries have done it, we can do it too. Let me tell you about Nestle. They just recently came to consumers in South Africa who demanded its baby food be GMO free. Why did Nestle do it? Because a concerned group of citizens demanded it. Margaret Mead said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. It is the only thing that ever has. Like in South Africa, we can do the same here in Canada. We must do the same thing here in Canada. We are the voice. We have the right to know what's in our food. And what do we want? Labeling. When do we want it? No! Yes! Yesterday! <laughs> The growing of food should be an act of love. Yeah. Yeah. And as my granddad Hubert said, always leave the soil better than when you found it. Uh, our company made. It has three armholes, and each is wearing it, and it says organic... Uh, you should show it. <laughs> GMO shirts are easy to spot. GMO foods aren't. Oh. 